Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Sports Talk with Broads. We are broadcasting live from the Manscaped Man Cave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BROD at manscaped.com. We are here. We are officially here. We are exactly where this franchise wanted to be when they selected Jalen Hurts in the second round. Jalen Hurts is your starting quarterback. And I'm not shocked, but I'm a little surprised at the same time. I thought the easy way to go about this would be you allow Carson Wentz to start against the Saints And if it's bad, if it's ugly, you yank him mid-game and you can place Jalen Hurts into the game in that moment. So I thought that's the way that they would do it because it's essentially the easier way to approach this. So there's so many different ways to view what the hell just happened in benching Carson Wentz, essentially. Wasn't it Doug Peterson, and we will start here, Wasn't it Doug Peterson that stated just a handful of weeks ago that the message would be that the season is over if they go to Jalen Hurts? So is Doug Peterson telling his team right now, we're done. They watched the New York Giants win and they thought, we're screwed. Now Washington ended up beating, who did they play again this week? Washington beat Pittsburgh, that's right, in that doubleheader game on Monday night. I wonder if Doug Peterson's watching around the league looking at the NFC East and saying, wow, we have no chance. Let's throw in the kid to see what we have. It's a tough spot to just get thrown into the fire. Hey, Jalen, you're going up against the New Orleans Saints and this defense. Good luck. Oh, by the way, your offensive line is going to get abused against what the Saints can bring to the table from their defensive front standpoint. So have fun, go use your legs, and don't get hit too hard. Look, I I think the kid can make some plays, and I'm intrigued. It's hard not to be intrigued. I'm rooting for Jalen Hurts because I do care about this franchise, and I want them to win, but I also want them to feel pain for putting themselves in this spot at the same time. But I don't want to see the kid fail. I think he has a good head on his shoulders. We all know about what he did in college. I'm here rooting, and from the limited amount of snaps that I saw against the Packers on the road, I saw... Two, that really stood out to me, phenomenal throws. One to Greg Ward in the end zone, and of course that outstanding throw to the left sideline to Jalen Rager who made a play. So based off of the production I saw from Carson Wentz, I'm excited for Sunday's game because, well, I want to see how it shapes up. I want to see the kid make more plays. It's just a really tough spot to get thrown in. Hey, here you go. Have at it, kid. And smack him on the ass. Go look, kid. That's essentially what this organization is doing. But I literally just heard the head coach weeks ago utter those words about how if you're putting Carson Wentz on the bench, what type of message does that send to the team? Well, you did it, Doug. So let's go back to your words. Did you really mean what you said at the time, or were you lying because you didn't want to throw Carson Wentz under the bus at that time? Was that still in your stage of, I got to protect the quarterback, this is the franchise quarterback, he's our guy, I need to stay with that motor right now, knowing that if it continued, you were going to eventually put his ass right there on the bench. So that's option number one. Option number two, when looking at the possibilities, is Doug Peterson coaching for his job? Is this a scenario where he personally feels this offense works, my coaching is not that bad, the skill players we have are not as atrocious as what people are saying, and we need to fix the quarterback spot, and when that is fixed, my scheme works. My offense works. Now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying, is that how Doug Peterson personally feels? Because I would bet my whole damn savings that Doug Peterson feels great about his offense and feels so much different than everybody else in this city when it comes to play calling and play design and things of that nature. 
So I would imagine that Doug Peterson thinks if I at least get a quarterback that can make the standard plays, my offense is going to flow. So is Doug Peterson feeling the hot seat? You heard Ian Rappaport talk about it on Twitter on Sunday. I believe that's when the news broke. If it was Sunday or over the weekend, or whatever day it was specifically, that isn't really the main focus here. What was said was the main focus, and Doug Peterson's feeling it. So I question, is Doug now at the point where you look at the last four games of the season? You have this game coming up against the New Orleans Saints. A Taysom Hill ran New Orleans Saints. Tough team to beat regardless, no matter who's playing. But without Drew B, without Drew Brees, it definitely makes it easier. So you have the Saints. You have a beatable Arizona Cardinals team. That team is not the same. You have Dallas and you have Washington. Is Doug Peterson looking ahead and looking at Jalen Hurts and saying, this is my best quarterback right now. I need to win football games to prove to everybody, including the owner and the GM, that I got this. Option number three. Is Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie forcing this upon Doug Peterson? Is Doug Peterson willing to allow Carson Wentz to battle this thing out so he can find himself where internally Carson Wentz needs to come together and play this thing out so he can work himself out of this ugly play, of this jam? But we already know that this GM, Howie Roseman, has an input on who plays on Sundays, on what happens with the 53-man roster. And we know that this owner is meddling. We know that he is capable of pulling strings. And Howie Roseman's his little puppet. Wherever Jeffrey Lurie goes, Howie Roseman's following. Whatever Jeffrey Lurie wants, Howie Roseman wants too. Shocker. He's a puppet. I don't see Howie Roseman fighting back. If Jeffrey Lurie wants something, guess what? Jeffrey Lurie is going to get it. So this second round pick, well, we picked him here. Coach, it's your time. It's your time to make the decision. It's your time to make the move. I just question if he has the power. Now, I would love to think the answer is yes. Please tell me the head coach has the decision who's playing. But there were reports, Jeff Mosher, inside the Burts, he put it out that Jeffrey Lurie was directive towards playing Jalen Hurts if Carson Wentz struggles. So I'm basing this off of very respected reporters and very respected people who cover the Eagles. They were informed and they got the information that, well, Jeffrey Lurie told Doug Peterson. And this was in the game against Seattle. That was before the game against Seattle, the day of the game. That's when the news broke. So we all thought, hey, we're going to see it more. We're going to see him more. And what do you know? You saw a struggling Carson Wentz, and they were not pulling the trigger. So I questioned at that time, hold on a second. Was Jeffrey Lurie telling Doug Peterson to do something, and Doug was playing the opposite and not doing what he was told from the owner? Well, Carson Wentz did put together some sort of drive late in that first half, which bought him more time, but it still was not good enough. And it was a really bad performance from Carson all around in that matchup against the Seahawks as well. So, you know, there's just so much circulating this franchise right now, and it's bad. It's a black cloud that's following every single move that they make. So there's even an option four, and I do think that this option is out there. It is to the extreme. It's not as reasonable as the other three, but is it possible that they try and improve Jalen Hurts' trade value so they can move on from him, acquire something else, and then stick with Carson Wentz, whose contract is not movable? Now, once again, I don't think that that is a reality. I feel that one is the far-fetched idea, but I'm looking at everything at the moment. It was clear that at the time of the draft, they thought something of this kid. And I wasn't buying into, they're going to try and trade him later on. I never really thought that that would ever be a mindset with the second-round draft pick because you only have two options. You get another second-round draft pick, which would make really no sense. 
or you would get a first-round draft pick, which I, I don't think is a reality. So my point is, why would you take someone in the second round to try and improve their draft, or excuse me, their trade value later on? But there were some who thought that that was their motor heading into the draft when they selected him. I, I don't know what they were thinking. You know, long term, I really did believe that they looked around the league. They saw what was happening at the quarterback position. And long term, they were drafting the quarterback of the future. Whenever Carson Wentz's contract was ready to go, that's when they would make the switch. I didn't think they anticipated it to be anytime soon. I didn't think that it would be now. And I don't think they thought that it would be now either. But they did this to themselves, and they need to sit in the stank. That's what they need to do. When you look at Carson Wentz, the person, he's a very nice person. And when I see him clapping on the sidelines after Jalen Hurts makes a play, obviously we know the competitor inside of him is furious, but he is a good dude who wears his heart on his sleeves. Like, he's a good guy, nice individual. I don't think anyone would look at Carson Wentz and say, this guy's an ass. He's got a good heart, wants to be the good teammate. Well, I heard this, and I thought it was really, really intriguing to... To just look at it with this view. I think this is a curse for Carson. That he's this nice of a guy. Religious guy. Family guy. Nice guy. Would Tom Brady ever allow that to happen? The answer is no. He would not allow for that to happen. Jimmy Garoppolo was sent out of town. And this was Tom Brady, who's a Super Bowl winning quarterback, the best to ever do it, but he's wired differently. His brain is totally in a different mindset. He has the same head case situation, if that even makes sense, as Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan would make up stories about what other people said on the other team just to get his blood boiling so when he touched the court, he would be in a different mental state of mind and he would dominate at another level. Moral of the story here is that, hey, if Carson Wentz was more of a douche, if you will, if he had more of that attitude... Would this even be the case? Because you know this wouldn't even work in a spot where you have the greatest quarterback of all time where he wouldn't be threatened. Would Tom Brady ever be threatened by a Jimmy Garoppolo or a Jalen Hurts? The answer is no. But he doesn't allow that to even happen. He wouldn't even be willing to have someone behind him. And that comes from his competitive nature and the spirit of how he operates from an athletic standpoint, I just wonder if the attitude of Carson Wentz is also the downfall with him, and he's essentially getting walked all over. This organization is walking all over him, and because of who he is, he's sort of allowing it to happen, and it does seem like that is the case. Half of me says, dude, it should not matter who is behind you. You are Carson Wentz. You have showed a ton of success in this league, specifically in 2017, which helped your squad win the Super Bowl. You were at the top. You were the MVP of the league. You're going to be afraid of a guy behind you? You're going to be afraid of some rookie? You got to go out there and just ball. Do you. Put that behind you. That shouldn't bother you. Half of me does feel that way, even though I do think people take it to the next level and think that there's no such thing as a mental side of the game and this can't somehow impact anyone. Of course it can. But the best rise, the better ones rise to the occasion. And yes, some of me does feel like that is the case and that is what is needed out of your quarterback. The other side of me looks at an organization that completely failed his quarterback. They did not support him whatsoever. They paid him, and then they punched him in the nuts. They paid him, and then they kicked him in the nuts and punched out his teeth, gave him two black eyes. I don't know why they did this, but they did this. See, it's funny because some people are so stunned that they are in this spot. And I get why, but I also remember billions of conversations and Billions of headlines 
about what that Jalen Hurts pick can possibly lead to. And this was one of them. And it was at the top of the list. Of course, of course this can happen. But I don't think Jeffrey Lurie, Howie Roseman, and even Doug Peterson understand what the locker room vibe would be. How it is to be in a locker room with the quarterback that looks over the team, has a message, but oh yeah, here's a second rounder that the team just drafted in and nobody knows why. Well, apparently they clearly think that he has some sort of skill set that can maybe override your $100 million man. And Doug was in a locker room. That's what blows my mind. But he's a stunod. He lacks brain cells. So it doesn't shock me that, woof, it went right over his head. Woof. That sounds like a dog. What I tried to do there was show wind going over his head. Seeing information go right over his head. There is something about the camaraderie. And instantly, from the selection, as soon as it happened, you split everybody up. You divided the locker room. I watched Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks go through a miserable time. And what did they do? Well, they said, screw you, everybody. Let's move on. Let's get the quarterback where he needs to be. And let's surround him with the proper team, with the proper personnel. Am I watching something here in Philadelphia go down that similar? Nope. No, I am not. It's almost as if they will do the exact opposite. I swear to God, they watch the league. They watch Kyler Murray. They watch Lamar Jackson. They watch this dual threat quarterback style of play. And they want that. And sure, there are successful quarterbacks right now. Josh Allen, look at what he's grown into. That's super fun. That's super exciting to watch. But Lamar Jackson is having major struggles after succeeding a year ago. Kyler Murray and this Arizona Cardinals team, uh uh-oh, they're going in the wrong direction, and it's happening fast. They are not some tough opponent anymore. Their offense does not seem to be as lethal. For all of these dual-threat quarterbacks that are fun to watch, and they do have a skill set that is unique and is beneficial, there's a lot of guys that are failing miserably because, well, they rely too much on their athleticism or they can't throw the football so well or they only use their legs or they pass up on better spots on the field. Like, maybe you could have got a 45-yard gain, but you got a 7-yard gain because he wasn't going through his progressions, and instead, they decided to take off because that's what they do. That's how their brain is when things collapse, when things go wrong, when they can't see who they want to see. They just take off immediately. Well, that's a big 30-plus yard difference in that play if that's a spot. So you are seeing that happen throughout the league as well, and I'm not saying it's bad to have a dual-threat quarterback. I'm just throwing everything out there where that is a scenario that you are seeing. You are seeing quarterbacks fail because of them being so into that mindset of I'm a dual threat quarterback. And teams can game plan for it. And a lot of film does a lot of service for these teams. The locker room dynamic, though, is something that blows my mind. It was like they were oblivious to this even being a possibility, as if it wasn't the number one problem that possibly could have happened when you drafted Jalen Hurts. But they were unaware. And I still don't think they realize it. It's not as if Jeffrey Laurie and Howie Roseman are talking and communicating in an office going, you know where I think this went wrong? With us. I swear to God, they have no clue. And it blows my mind. It's a failure. And I don't know how you're going to get out of it. You can't move on from Carson Wentz. So let me ask you this. Because you did this, because this is your quarterback long term based off of the contract, and you can get out of it in a couple of years, still take a little bit of a hit, and it's more serviceable to do then, But let's be realistic. You look at that contract and you are stuck and tied to number 11. Does that mean because you did this, because you put yourself here, you can move on from the head coach and Doug Peterson and try with a fresh set of ideas and a fresh regime? Do you try then? 
Here's what I think about that. I don't know if Carson Wentz is broken forever, and I lean to say that it wouldn't be for the rest of his entire career. But I think it's broken here in Philly. Even if you bring in a new GM, a new head coach, an actual offensive coordinator, and hell, let's just throw a DC in there just to say you're changing everything. A whole fresh set of information, a whole fresh sense of identity. I still don't think that's enough to break the psyche part of Carson Wentz here in this city. If he goes elsewhere, yeah. That's what I think it takes. I think it takes a new helmet, a new logo, a new color scheme. I think it's all she wrote. Now, what if a new regime comes in and they trade Jalen Hurts and they say, Carson, you are it. You are the guy. We believe in you. None of this mixed messaging crap. None of this nonsense of drafting a quarterback, this and that. No, no, no. Carson, we trust you. We believe in you. We are going to an, we are going to adapt a scheme that best utilizes your skill set. We're going to run the football. We're going to be creative. Would that be enough? Well, I'm definitely more intrigued by that scenario. But I still wonder if the pressure of Philly, the pressure of the fans, everything involved, the media attention. Look, they were national story worthy today. All it was was Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts. Every single station I put on. Hell, Greeny's been talking about it on ESPN Radio for weeks, nonstop. Every time I hear Greeny, Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz. So he hasn't shut up about it forever. I just don't know if he can be fixed here. So what does that mean for the long-term answer of this quarterback? I don't know. And I don't know if four games is even enough. We've seen four game sample sizes out of quarterbacks that are outrageously solid. And then you see four games that suck. What does this tell you? And if you don't get enough information, if you don't see enough that you like, what do you do next season? Is it a quarterback battle right from the start and it's between these two? I mentioned this and I know it sounds silly and it sounds crazy, but we are also talking about an organization that drafted a second round quarterback after just paying the franchise quarterback and it doesn't even kick in at that moment and you still decided to get a quarterback. So how can I rule this out of the question? If you don't see something you like out of Hurts, if you don't believe in Carson Wentz anymore, if you're dra- drafting top five and you're not normally going to be in this spot, do you do it? Do you go quarterback? It sounds so bad. It sounds so egregious. And it is. But you did this. That's the quote of the week. You did this. It's on you. Sorry. It's on you. You know what else is on you? Making a ton of money. And how can you make a ton of money? Well, it's simple. You use DraftKings. DraftKings has brought their expertise to legal sports betting. It's a legitimate sports book based right here in the U.S. You can rest assured that your funds are totally secure. DraftKings, America's top-rated sports book app, is safe, secure, and reliable. Deposit and withdraw at your convenience. Listen to this deal. All new users have a chance to earn a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. All you need to do is download the app and sign up using promo code BROADS. Check out all that they have to offer, by the way, including player props, live betting, and so much more. If sportsbooks are not yet available in your state, don't forget about the DraftKings Fantasy app, which offers millions of dollars in total prizes every week. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. It's definitely been a hectic day, though. The news broke around 2 o'clock p.m. as soon as the sports bash started, where I'm on with Mike Gill, and we had the instant reaction, 2 to 6. Everyone was fired up, and we were processing, what does this really mean? What does this mean short-term? What does this mean long-term? And we had Rob Motti on of the Associated Press, and he definitely leans towards supporting Carson Wentz, and 
He's big on the unit of the offense is the reason why he has failed, and I think that plays a major role, and I don't think Doug Peterson has helped him whatsoever. So I do think that is a big part of the equation. But Rob Motti is big on allowing Carson Wentz to work himself out of this funk. You are tied to this guy from a contract standpoint, and there is no way of eating $30 million in dead cap to cut a guy, move on from a guy, trade a guy. You can't do it. You are stuck with him. So by default, you got yourself here. You need to have Carson Wentz out there. You can't have him sitting on your bench and being a backup. It just can't happen. So you got to allow this guy to work out of the jam, and that's why I feel when I broke down the four possibilities that I see, and I will repeat them. One, Doug Peterson thinks the season is over, and he's sending that message to the team, and he wants to see what Jalen Hurts is all about. Because if you remember, if you dial it back a few weeks ago, the message to the team would be the season is over if I made that switch to Jalen Hurts. Well, Washington football team wins, the New York Giants win, and you see the move happen. So is that how this is being played out. Is Doug Peterson coaching for his job? Is Howie or Jeffrey Lurie influencing him to make the move? Or are they trying to improve trade value for Jalen Hurts? How I feel this is playing out, I think it's number two. I think Doug Peterson is feeling a lot of heat. He's feeling a lot of pressure. He's being questioned. And if we know anything about this league, these coaches are stubborn. They think they know everything. It's all about them. They try and prove that they are right no matter what. They will stand by everything just to make sure that they look like the smartest person in the room. So I feel that Doug is being questioned so much and there's a lot of question marks happening internally and nobody knows what Jeffrey Lurie is going to do. And I think where there's smoke, there's fire. There's a lot of noise surrounding the state of this team and who will be coaching next season. So with that being said, I think Doug looks at Carson and he believes Carson's the only problem where he believes if you get a quarterback in there who will make average throws, this offense will look significantly better and he won't look as bad where he can point the finger then. It's almost as if he's trying to prove to the owner, I got this. That's how I think Doug Peterson is viewing the situation. So that's how I feel. But I want to know how you feel. And you can comment down below in the comment section if you're listening to this on YouTube. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, because we're on all the major podcasting platforms as well. Make sure you go there, subscribe, leave a five-star rating. You can use the review system as well as a comment section. I'm not going to lie to you. Over the last handful of weeks, the... Audio version podcasts have been through the roof, getting so much attention and love. So that's just another avenue. I want to throw that out there that if you're on the go, if it's the weekend, you're doing your your casual drive around town and you want a little sports talk with Broads action, you're not going on YouTube, you can get it on the podcast app. But I want to know how you feel about this current situation. I do want the kid to succeed. At the same time, that would probably give Howie Roseman a little bit more confidence, I guess, when it it comes to his status. I don't know if Jeffrey Lloyd is going to move on from the guy anyway. You're in cap hell, and that is his strong suit, and they're super close. This would validate the draft pick more, even though I wouldn't view it that way. I'm talking about from an organizational standpoint, they would view it that way. It made no sense from the jump, and it still makes no sense. I can't let Howie Roseman off the hook because I mentioned this. There's two ways you view it. If you say, fine, the Jalen Hurts pick worked out. They lucked themselves into this. You screwed up by signing Carson Wentz. You didn't have to do it. You did it because you wanted to because you thought you were outsmarting the market. It backfired if this is the game plan for the future. Jalen Hurts being the starter and Carson Wentz with this big time money. So I can't say, well, you picked Jalen Hurts, so you're off the hook. You actually found the future quarterback. No, no, no. Because you screwed up the entire organization with that contract that you did not have to do. And if you view it in another way, it's, well, you had Carson Wentz. Jalen Hurts becomes nobody. What was your game plan? 
The messaging has just been so off. And that's my problem with this whole thing. If they looked at Jalen Hurts solely as a backup quarterback that will play a handful of snaps, I think that's what needed to be delivered from the jump. Let's imagine a scenario where, a hypothetical, that they do draft Jalen Hurts, but afterwards, it's as simple as this. We love Carson Wentz. He's our guy. He's our quarterback. Look, we just paid him, and we've seen him succeed in this league at a high, high rate. Why do we draft Jalen Hurts? Well, if you look at this organization through the history, they we do value. I was going to say they because Doug Peterson will be saying they, but he's part of it, so we'd probably be saying we. We valued the backup quarterback in the past. It paid off in the Super Bowl run and even back in history as well. Kevin Cobb, you name it. We value the backup quarterback. Because you never know. You just never know what can happen in this league. So the draft pick in Jalen Hurts is nothing other than a backup quarterback. And it has nothing to do with Carson Wentz. We love Carson. He's the guy moving forward. And it always will be. Confirm, confirm, confirm. No mixed messages. They play this game where they want to be strategic. Where they want to be deceptive. They're trying to to kind of be mysterious and mischievous. Mis- mischievous. What's the word I'm looking for? Mis- mischievous? That's not it. Come on, dude. What is the word? Mischief. Is that it? What? I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know. But you get my point. They try and be sneaky and slither around things. They don't have to do that. Be so blatant. Be so honest. And then there's really no questions. But instead, you don't really know whose idea was this. What's their actual idea with this? Do they want to move on from Carson Wentz and sneak Jalen Hurts into the starting lineup? Come on. It can't be this way. So the messaging early on, it could have been eliminated. This storyline could have been eliminated easily. But they don't operate that way. They think that they are fooling the fan base. They think that they are fooling the media. They're not. They look like fools. That's what it is. They're not fooling anybody. They just look like fools. And they're not aware of it. That's the scary part. They're not aware. And will they ever be? I don't know if they will. What I do know, though, is Orbit Energy and Power is aware. They are aware that they can change your home and your lifestyle forever. With over 20 years of experience in the solar industry, they are home to your solar experts in residential and commercial projects. They are dedicated to making sure your project is completed easily and properly by using high-quality materials and trained professionals to get the job done right. We are talking $0 electric bills. They can eliminate your electric bill completely. They also can provide water purification systems, backup energy services, battery storage, tree removals, electrical upgrades, and more. You name it. If you need to upgrade your home, Orbit Energy and Power is the place to call. Their information is down below, their website, and their phone number. They are in, the Eagles that is, the worst spot in the history of the franchise. This is bonkers. It's almost like I'm numb to it and I haven't digested it fully yet. Knowing that this was going to be a high probability when they drafted Jalen Hurts, it's still almost as if I am shocked. I feel like I'm Carson Wentz. When Carson Wentz is up to the media, he's numb. It's almost as if he's just saying things and he's not even aware of what's happening. It all happened so quickly. It all fell apart so quickly. He's so lost mentally. There's nothing in his brain. He's just a body that's moving and talking and he's not comprehending the scene. Well, I think right now that's what's happening to all of us. We're so numb to this. As if the Carson Wentz drama is real. The debacle is real. The guy we thought we had for the next 10 to 15 seasons. The guy that we claimed would always keep you engaged no matter what. Has fell flat on his face. The organization is tied to this bad contract. You drafted a quarterback in the second round. And you're questioning the head coach that won the Super Bowl. Where did it all go? And where does it all go from here? I think that's realistically the question moving forward is, what does this team do? How do you move on from some of these guys, these veterans, these bigger contracts, these receivers? It's not going to be easy. 
And it might be a couple-year process. How about that? Let that sink in. I'm sorry to end on such a sour note, but it's reality. 99% of this team is sour. So every damn day when I talk about it, uh, it's going to be bad. No fault to our own here. It's all fault to them. But anyway, we'll end it here. I'm losing brain cells just thinking of the logo. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you next time.